students welcome to legacy ias academy in this particular video we are going to discuss about ethical concept and ethical dilemma we can say that people and philosophers for a long period time has been discussing that what is the ethics of lying in what situations lying can be justified or in what situations lying cannot be tolerated so in this particular video we are going to discuss about the concept and learning regarding the ethics of lying so let us try to understand about this concept in more detail so first of all the major dilemma or the major challenge that any philosophical any student of philosophy or any philosopher faces is that what is a line it is itself the definition itself is controversial in nature so before starting our discussion this is something that we have to keep in mind that we do not have still a full fledged or academic definition of line now the second problem or the second question that comes into our mind that is lying ever morally permissible permissible as far as the moral codes ethical codes are conduct do we have any situations where lying can be permitted or lying should never be considered as a right course of action so what we can say from our daily life experiences that though it is seen the lying is seen as a threat to civil society as said by many philosophers of the past there seem to be several instances in which lying seems the most intuitively moral option that means in those situation you cannot do anything else no right course of action you can consider to be right other other than lying in that in some situations we'll discuss that with examples in coming time besides if we talk about or we take a very broad definition of lying and if we try to adopt it and try to think our action from that particular definition it seems utterly impossible for any human to escape the lies now it can be because of instances of self deception or also because of our, of our social construction of our persona so it is in this context we have to keep in mind the difficulties and also we have to uh, understand that this, since there is no exact definition of lying we have to face the foremost moral questioning regarding it and what is the foremost Uh, moral uh, foremost question regarding lying is that is lying permissible or is lying justified so first of all let us try to understand how and why a lying cannot be justified or people should not lie so the first important point is that lying is considered as a threat to the civil society and the most important work in this regard has been done by well known a uh, philosopher that is immanuel kant immanuel kant was a german philosopher and he has given a theory of deontology and within that he also have given a concept of categorical imperative and under deontology the kant has clearly said that people should focus on their duty and as far as duty is concerned lying is not acceptable lying is morally unacceptable and no matter what situations are you find yourself in and no matter what consequences are there lying should not be a course of action or should not be a right course of action also it is believed by philosophers that a society that tolerate lies the argument states that in that kind of society trust is very undermined and thus with it the sense of collectivity collectivity also suffers in that kind of society and overall if society is engaged in blatant lying it can lead to the destruction or the collapse of the societal structure as well and in this context we can understand the example of us versus italy in us lying is considered as a very uh, moral sin we can say while in thing italy lying is tolerated to a much larger extent at least larger to a larger extent as compared to united states of america and if you do the survey you will find out that the trust of people in the us government is much more higher as compared to trust of italian people in the italian government and one of the reason this uh, can be that the extent of lying that is permeable in the italian and american society so in what instances can lies be tolerated in this regard again several work and several theories have been published the first and foremost important point is that the importance of trust so for example in that case it is said that as far as nicolo machiavelli is concerned he says that though the trust is very very important in functioning of our family in functioning of our society and functioning of even the nation state deceiving or lying in this, in some cases are the best option the most common example we can take is suppose that you are in a war zone and some soldiers has come to your house and you are asking about the address of your friend and they want to kill your friend so obviously in that case there is no other option there is no other right option but you have to save the life of your friend and that is when you can lie that you do not know the address or do not know the whereabouts of your friend so that is something in, that is example that machiavelli is giving that deceiving is in some case the best option 
So the moral question that comes in front of us is that should lying always be despised, despite it erodes the trust, despite it causes a lot of problems, should lying always be despised? So there are several instances where lying should not be despised. And one such instance is when there is a situation of white light. Now, what is a white light? Generally, it is believed that this is the white lies are such situations or such cases which are least controversial in nature and in which lying is generally tolerated by the society as well. So, for example, it is many times better to tell a small lie than having someone worrying unnecessarily or becoming sad or losing the mind. For example, if you are sick and suppose you are far away from your family, now obviously if your mother or father asks how are you, you cannot say that you are very very bad state of in very bad health state because you understand that they can unnecessarily worry and anyway they cannot do something in that case. So in that case, many times people say that I am fine or the situation is not so bad. Similarly, we talk about the white lie even is not uh, cannot be endorsed from the standpoint of Kantian ethics, but they provide one of the most clear cut arguments in the favor of consequentialism. So we have two different ethical theories. One is deontological theory by Kant and one is consequentialism. So consequentialism basically say that whether an action is the right course of action, whether the lying can be justified or not, it has to be determined on the basis of what is the consequence of telling a lie. If the consequence is favorable, if the consequence does not cause harm to anyone, if consequences bring happiness to a larger number of people, in that case, lying can be justified. On the other hand, to again remind you, the Khan says lying can never be morally accepted, it can never be morally justified. So we have two extreme views as far as the lying and its ethics is concerned. So many philosophers then try to explain that in which situations white lies or what are the examples of white lies and how we can justify the white lies. So one case is, suppose a man lies to his wife about where they are going in order to get her to a place where a surprise birthday party has been organized. Now the action of this individual in, uh, or the we can say the rationale or the reason behind his lying it is not something bad. It is just to give a surprise birthday party to his wife. So in that case it is an example of white lie and it can be tolerated by the society. Second also many times if you want to decrease or the extent of grief or a suffering by any person then also white light can be used. For example if a young child has been rescued from a plane crash and he has in a very weakened state both physically as well as mentally. In this situation, suppose if his parents have unfortunately been killed in the crash, but he is unaware about this particular event. In that case, if he asks about his parents and in that case, doctor will not necessarily tell him the bad news, will not uh, tell him the exact news and he can say that they are okay because he intend to tell the truth once the child is strong. Because if the child hears the truth right now, it can damage him psychologically, mentally and even it will take a lot of time for him to recover physically. And that is why the reason or the objective behind this lying is to ensure the well-being of an individual. So that is also an example of white lie which can be tolerated morally. The third important point also we can example we can understand is that many times we exaggerate praise on our children all the time especially when they are doing something in their earliest attempt whether it is to sing or dance or paint or write and in that cases this kind of exaggerated preach which also can be considered as a type of white lie encourage these individuals encourage these children for the future practice which in turn can promote the development in some of the genuine achievement so again the end result or the consequence of this lie is happiness that is ensured to the individual or ensured to the person who has who is being lying so in this situation also, this is an example of white lie that can be tolerated by society. So by these examples, we understood that there are certain situations where lying or lie can be an example of white lie that can be tolerated to a large extent as compared to other lies. The second reason is if someone is lying for a good cause. As discussed before, if the purpose of lying is to save the life of any people or any person, in that case, lying can also be justified. However, the problem is that many times lying becomes morally excusable and typically morally excused in these cases also. But here there is a slippery slope. The slippery slope that philosophers point out is that even if a person is justifying his purpose of lying that it was for the greater purposes, it was for the good purposes and it was to save the life of an individual, who is to say whether the scenario excuses you from lying? That means who can be the judge that whether or when what uh, when you have lied whether it was in good context or bad context so that is why the determinants the determination of the purpose of lying becomes very very difficult and that gives a subjective uh, viewpoint to this whole purpose to this whole phenomenon 
For example, many philosophers try to find a joke and say that if you talk about or take a standpoint of Immanuel Kant, Kant says lying can never be justified and lying can never be accepted as a right course of action. So for example, philosophers argue that suppose Kant is there and his mother is in the house and suppose some criminal come with knife or with uh, some kind of salt weapons and ask Kant that where is your mother? I want to kill your mother. In that case, Kant as per the Kant's of uh, this, we can say Kant's ideology, he cannot lie to this criminal. He will have to say that my mother is just upstairs. Go and kill her. Well, at least not go and kill her. He can clearly tell that where her mother is, where his mother is currently located, and that can lead to end result of killing of the Kant's mother. So in that situation, it becomes very very difficult. It presents an ethical and moral dilemma that how lying can be considered as a right, lying cannot be considered as a right course of action in all kind of situations. So basically it is a kind of situational phenomena where lying can be justified and some situations lying cannot be justified. The other instance where lying is generally observed and tolerated by society is in the uh, domain of self-deception. For example, many times humans seem to convince themselves of being excused from taking a certain course of action because for example, we can understand, suppose a woman is undergoing domestic violence repeatedly by her husband, but she do not want to have divorce, she do not want to separate from husband, family and children. In that case, she try to de uh, deceive herself that maybe it is her fault that she has been, uh, we can say, struck by her husband. So that is examples that when a person do not want to take a certain course of action because it is unpleasant to him or her, he or she try to self-deceive himself or herself. That is one example of lying as well. But the problem is who is to say that you are self-deceiving yourself or not. This is again a subjective judgment. This is again a subjective decision. And that is why it becomes very difficult to objectively understand this process. Third is to judge the morality of lying provides or is we can say uh, there's a lot of slippery, slippery slope in there and that is why it presents again with us a dilemma and challenge that whether lying can be justified or not. The fourth re uh, reason behind lying can stand or ethics we can try to stand is that society itself is nothing but a big lie. There is a deep-seated lies that are present in our society and the most common example even in our modern times you can say is that the good clothing, good brand clothing, the use of makeup, the plastic surgeries, ceremonials, these are nothing but an example of lying because this is the way how society or the individuals in the society try to mask the actual, uh, actual uh, this we can say, pattern of the society. For example, the uh, makeup or the plastic surgery is nothing but an attempt to hide actually how their, actu uh, how their original face looks like. So this is also an example of lying. However, this can be considered as perhaps an involuntary outcome because the social structure, our upbringing of society is in such a way that this becomes a kind of involuntary kind of lie that people are even not aware that they are lying or by lying they are not aware they can cause harm to someone else. So what we can say in conclusion is that clearly lying is an issue that is worth examining. It has been being examined by philosophers since eons. However, as many people believe it, it is a bigger problem today than it has ever been. The reason is very simple because today our world is very much interconnected and whatever happens in one part of the world clearly affects the other part of the world as well. However, social uncertainty are abound also because we are a mixture of Kantian, virtuist and utilitarian ethics who share no common ground and that is why depending on which ethics you follow, you can have different different interpretation as far as the ethics of the line is concerned. However, more likely we can say the problem is that too few persons adequately considered any ethical perspective when facing a situation that tempts a lie. That means many times when someone is lying or when someone is deciding not to lie, they are doing this on the basis of the situations that they found themselves in and they are doing this on the basis of consequences that they think that can happen. They do not think about lying from the perspective of ethics and that is something that is missing in our discussion. We have to make sure that ethical perspective is included whenever an individual is deciding that whether to lie or not to lie. So I hope you understood about this concept or the ethics behind lying, the several challenges and the moral dilemmas it presents with us. That is all for this particular video. I hope you like it. If you like it, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.